Hi everybody, I'm Eugene McMahon. Here I am standing in front of the Parliament House of Western Australia in Perth. I'm about to embark on a journey on Australian shores in regards to herbicides and Agent Orange used in WA. Uh, it's late August 2018 and about to start our journey starting from here talking with a few of the survivors of the story here in Perth and then we will venture up to the Kimberleys up to a town called Derby where the APB was doing the spraying and my brother Cyril Hunter had passed. He was one of the leading hands for APB at the time plus numerous other fellow workers. Yeah, back in 19... 88, when I changed uh, my position from working within the police force and coming across and working for the Honourable Ernie Bridge, I was based over in the building in Havelock Street. And uh, it was then when Ernie was the Minister for Aboriginal Affairs and for the Agricultural Department. The chemical spraying of the herbicide to deal with Nugara burr, mesquite, Parkinsonia on the Fitzroy River and out in the floodplains throughout the Kimberleys, right up to Kununurra. In the during that time, up to now, on a search of information dug up this red book. It's actually a journal of the Agriculture Department dating right back to 1958. It's uh, the Journal of the Department of Agriculture of Western Australia, Volume 7, Third Series, 1958. Now within this journal, it talks about the Kimberley area, which is my home country area, and the poisoning that happened back in 1955, 1957, when they were eradicating the Kimberley menace, the wallabies. They were actually poisoning waterholes, which killed off native food source, IG meaning kangaroos, emus, goannas, birds, that was our food source for our people. That is a form of genocide alone in that. All through my years of growing up along the Fitzroy River in the town of Derby, we were told that the kangaroo source out at Camballan, which was a agricultural farming area, they had sorghum, they tried rice, they tried a lot of stuff out on the floodplains. We were told then that the wallaby disappearance was because of a disease and everybody took it as, yeah, fair enough. Everything's evolved from day to day. Things change with the modern world. But now after reading this journal to discover that they were actually poisoned, which is not right. It's, it's a form of genocide. They actually, in 1955, I think it was, is also when they started work on the Kimberley Research Station up in the East Kimberleys, getting ready for the Ord project of growing cotton, sorghum, sugarcane, all failed projects. So moving on from that, there was another book that we found which shows that it wasn't only just in WA. New South Wales Department of Agriculture, it tells people, the farmers, how to actually mix 245T and 24D, which creates a mixture for Agent Orange. That was used in New South Wales. 
So it's not only here in WA, it's throughout Australia. Queensland, I believe, also may have the same issues that we are raising today. Oh, well, here we are again on the Fitzroy River, just about 80 k's out of town at the old crossing, Langey. These boys that were spraying weed, uh, Nugra Bird, which today, just being here on the river for a short time, I picked up five of them. So for all that time they've been spraying, hasn't done anything. And yet they were spraying the stuff with Agent Orange. Spraying the trees, which would kill off the trees, Parkinsonia, mosquito. They'd stand on either side of the tree and spray, because they were told, you can't drink it, but you can bath in it. Headaches, rashes, loss of weight. It's got a list of it. anxiety, bleeding, eye problem, vision, blindness, weakness, abdominal pains, depression, fatigue, headache, rash, itching. In 2001, when I entered Parliament, uh, one of the first things I did was start looking at the whole issue of the Kimberley herbicide workers. E the issue then had gone on far too long, and uh, in 2003, I made statements to that effect, both in the House and elsewhere. I, I worked with um, uh, Carl up in the uh, Kimberley, who had been one of the foremen of the herbicide workers and who had himself battled for many years up till then to try and do something about uh, the 90 or so workers that had been working with the APB that had been handling 245T and this suspect batch of Agent Orange. Now we had a number of inquiries, we had uh, uh, medical inquiries, uh, but eventually I managed to get an inquiry up that looked at uh, Quinana Chemical Industries and uh, tried to actually pin down whether, in fact, Agent Orange had been brought in from Singapore to Western Australia. We certainly found that was the case. What we couldn't actually prove was that that material had been mixed with 245T by Quinana uh, Chemical Industries and dispatched to the Kimberley. We do know that uh, uh, batches of uh, 245T uh, were returned to Western Australia uh, by South Australia because they were incompatible with what South Australia had been using previously, highlighting the fact that there had been some shandying of uh, uh, 245T with Agent Orange uh, in South Australia. It is a huge problem. One of the issues that was never really properly identified is that whilst there were 90 odd workers that we were able to identify uh, throughout the Kimberley who'd been APB workers who had used this material or used 245T and thereby possibly uh, the contaminant, contaminated Agent Orange, um, we do know also that a large number of station hands were also supplied with uh, 245T and, in essence, this rogue batch. Um, and they've never been looked at. So there are potentially other hundreds of other people who were exposed on pastoral leases uh, to the use of this 245T, which was being used for Nagura Burr up in the Kimberley. Previous governments have uh, made the right noises, but when it come, push comes to shove, um, there has been little compensation. The former state government uh, in the Gallup era under uh, Kim Chance uh, did uh, come up with a process that said, well, if, you, if you're an APB worker and you die of cancer, you will get compensation. But medical evidence showed us quite clearly you didn't necessarily get cancer. 
you got um, um, some vitistance, you could go blind, you could have skin lesions, you could have a whole range of problems. So in, in, inherently, the inquiries really were, never went anywhere. But I think what actually happened was that when there was some analysis within Cabinet um, in various governments that whether we should compensate these people across the board, it was looked at from a bean counting exercise and it would have cost millions of dollars. And I think that's where governments, both Labor and Liberal in the past, have always balked at the whole process. Going forward, we obviously need to reinvigorate the whole issue around the APB workers and indeed the pastoral workers who use this material. We do need a commitment by government into the future that the lacklustre approach to date needs to be reviewed. I'm very pleased that the member for the Kimberley, Josie Farrer, is taking up the cudgel again in relation to APB, work APB workers and the guys who worked on the pastoral industry. And we owe it to those young men um, and to Carl Drysdale, who was their foreman, who's fought long and hard for them to actually get this whole process back on the agenda again. It has been a, an unmitigating disaster. Uh, we've, we've got a whole range of people who have suffered, who have received no compensation. This even extends to the families. We know that workers' families who actually washed their clothes also became contaminated by 245T and or potentially Agent Orange. The story relates to me quite deeply since my family has been involved in over 30 odd years dealing with this chemical poisoning, the use of so-called herbicide, Agent Orange. I've lost certain members of my family. Now this has been going on for 30 years. We still have not been any closer to resolving it, to getting answers, to getting closure, and uh, it's affected our whole family. Now, we've waited over 25 odd years through the legal proceedings. At no time, none of these boys and females were ever given the right dignity, the right health, the right medical treatment for their causes, their complaints, their ailments. This is not about black or white. There are white people. There are mixed races, multicultured people that are suffering with this. Now own up. It's it's heart-wrenching to go along and do these interviews, listen to their stories. Colin Barnett wrote in a Premier letter to pay compensation. Other ministers, other reports stated pay compensation. The Australian government still, the Western Australian government, have not acknowledged any of it. Now, since I've started this journey, I'm starting to receive emails from other standing members of today stating what they're going to do. Is it because of the election? Or are they showing some form of compassion for these survivors? We're not going to go away. We're going to be still here. And we'll be still asking the same questions. When are you going to answer them? When are you going to own up?